All right, so I wanted to do a quick video and describe transformers, how they work, um, some practical things for air conditioning technicians, and then we're also just gonna pull it apart, see what we can find. I've never actually pulled one apart completely myself, so we'll see what we get out of this thing. But um, the first thing is that this is a multi-tap primary transformer. What that means is the primary is the part where the voltage and current comes into the transformer. And so we've got multiple taps, and I'll show you what that means in a second. But then this only has a single secondary. So this is the part that, that comes out of the transformer. From a really simple standpoint, a transformer is an electromagnet. And it actually uses electromagnetism in order to transfer current from one side to the other and we use a transformer generally in order to change the voltage one way or another. So this would be a multi-tap primary step-down transformer. So it's going from one of these incoming voltages, 120, 208, or 240, down to a fixed secondary, which is 24 volts. So either 120, 208, 240 from the primary, down to 24 volts. Really easy to wire. On the primary, common is white, so it gives you the color code right here. Common is white, so we know we're gonna use the common on the primary, so we know we're gonna use white. And then we choose one of these other three colors based on whether it is 120 volts for black, red would be 208, and orange would be 240. That's what we're limited to on this transformer. Another piece of information here is this is a 40 VA transformer. That's a 40 volt amp transformer. Since it has a 24 volt secondary, if you do the math, that leads to 1.66 amps, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, 1.66 amps is what can be drawn on the secondary before you're gonna run the risk of overloading the transformer. So volt amps is volts times amps um, equals volt amps. So that's how you calculate that. But really inside of here, you just have an electromagnet. You've got a, an iron core that goes down the center and it transfers electromagnetic energy from the primary to the secondary via magnetism without the two actually touching each other. So the primary and the secondary, they never actually touch. They're not directly connected. They're connected through a magnetic field known as magnetic flux. So because both of these wrap around this iron core, that's how the energy is transferred. And you'll notice if you look at this, it almost looks like there's two coils stacked on top of each other. And I think we're gonna find that that is what we have inside here. Again, I'm not really sure because I've never pulled this apart before. The number of wrap on the primary versus the secondary is what dictates whether it is a step up or step down and how much. And so it's a ratio. If you look at the secondary here is 24 volts. And if we wire this up for 240 volts, that's a 10 times divisor, 10 times multiplier, which means that in this case, you have 10 times the number of wraps on the 240 side, wraps of little copper wire. If you look inside there, you can kind of see some of that shiny copper in there because that's really what drives this thing. That's what drives this electromagnet. There's 10 times as many wraps on the primary but at the 240 volts as there is in the secondary, and that's what causes it to step down. So just as a you know a round number, let's say, if we have 100 wraps at 240 volts in the primary, that means we would only have 10 wraps on 24 volts on the secondary. And then each one of these, you know, this is a five time multiplier would be 120 and then 208s, you know, right in between there. We'll say seven for the sake of a, of a round number, seven and a half. That gives you an idea of how this works. Uh, this is rated for both 50 or 60 hertz, so it works in the US or in Europe. Another thing to notice about this transformer, these 40 VA, this is what we would call, you know, a universal transformer. This is one that we keep on the trucks for repairing air conditioning. On the secondary, there is no fuse in this. And so, um, some transformers come with fuses built into them. This one does not. If you don't have a fuse in the secondary anywhere else, then you would need to put a fuse in, and all you would have to do is just you know, connect one end to a fuse. You typically use a little five amp fuse. So this is a little five amp fuse that we would use in a lot of air conditioning applications. In some cases you use a three amp fuse, but five amp's really common, and you can install that in line on the hot legs. You would just connect this to one side using a spade connector, and then connect the other side out to the R terminal or on your air handler or furnace or whatever, wherever it was connected before. And then that provides some fuse protection there. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this manually, make sure you make good connections, make sure that they're insulated all the way, that there's no exposed wire, that sort of thing. But I found myself needing to do that on many occasions. So now I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and start pulling this thing apart and see how easy it is to pull apart. And maybe, maybe I need a hacksaw. So I'm going to start with these little tabs here on the bottom. Now let's see if this will pull off here. There we go. 
Bottom fell off. Sides and top coming off pretty easily here. You guys kept glued in place. All right, there's our iron core. It wraps around the outside and then it goes into the center. And uh, let's go ahead and pull this wrapping off first. And then we may need to cut this thing with a, with a hacksaw or something in order to get in there further. These are soldered into tiny little wires, tiny little copper wires, and they're just wrapped around and soldered and isolated from each other in that way. And that's where it taps into different points in the primary of that transformer. Obviously, you know, in order to get 10 wraps, it's gotta be the full length, and then five would be, you know, half as many wraps. And so, depending on where you connect, that depends on whether you're connecting, you know, beginning to end, or whether or not you're, you know, tapping in somewhere in the middle. And so, the common side would be one end, and then the other side would be 240, which would be the other end, which would be the full, you know, 10 times wraps. And so, there's some variability there. But if we connect, check on this other side, we should see there's, you know, it doesn't, you don't have those multiple options, because you've only got one. We have one secondary. Let's try to cut through this really easily, real carefully. Yeah, so you can see this is where our secondary wires in, and you'll notice something interesting, which is that the secondary has much larger gauge wire. And without going into that too much of why that is, you have higher amperage on the secondary because the voltage is that much lower. So if you kind of work Ohm's law backwards, or actually Watt's law backwards based on the volt amps, you'll, you'll see that your amperage is going to be uh, much, much higher on the secondary, which is why the winding size is also a lot larger. It has to be able to dissipate that heat. That's mostly all there is to see there. You've got two electromagnets, or two coils of wire, one stacked on top of another. You have a smaller coil on top here that's connected to the secondary. You've got a larger coil here on the bottom that's connected to the primary because it has to have more wraps of wire. And you've got an iron core that they both wrap around. That's really it. These do not touch each other. They're insulated from each other. The only way that they transfer energy is through the electromagnetic field that travels through this iron core. So this is what's called an iron core transformer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, put this thing in a vise and I'm gonna cut the top off of this. I'm probably gonna damage the secondary part, but I wanna get it open so that I can show you how it functions as an electromagnet using just the primary side. All right, so I learned a couple of new things. I learned that these do not cut very easily because they're made of laminated steel plates that are all laid into each other like this. Cutting this, I was hoping I would have this nice intact electromagnet that I could show you its lifting force because you could, you know, potentially have the coils here and you could lift up if you energized it. But that's not how this is going to work because these are all just coming apart. That's what's inside a transformer. This is kind of cool though. In the process of taking it apart, the uh, primary windings all came disconnected because of how thin the wire is. So they just pulled right out of the solder or broke off. You can see right there, broke off the, the solder. Um, but it's exactly like we, we figured, it's just wraps of wire. And um, it's got this plastic core. So I thought I was gonna be able to separate them, but I can't because they were just wrapped around this plastic core, which is actually kind of surprising because that, pla that layer of plastic acting as a thick of an insulator as that is um, to the core does have to reduce the efficiency a little bit, but I imagine in manufacturing, these are quite a bit easier to spool. But if you were to count full number of wraps on this side to this side, you would have 10 times more wraps here. Also, you know, smaller winding, like I mentioned, and then you'd have 10 times less wraps here in the secondary. You can see the secondary stayed connected because the wires are a lot bigger and connecting a lot better. Another note with transformers is that when you find one that's failed, it's interesting to disconnect it and then ohm out the primary and the secondary and see which one is open because when they fail they're they're going to fail open eventually even if they start shorted they eventually will fail open because the thing starts melting and depending on whether or not it's an open secondary or an open primary it gives you a pretty good indication of what happened to it if there was a line side power problem then it will often result in failure of the primary side and if it's the low voltage side that had the short or issue then it will show up usually in the uh, secondary side. There's another little thing you can do. But, you know, it's always fun to pull things apart, see what they look like in the inside. That is the inside of a 40VA universal 
simple residential HVAC transformer. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.